Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're going to talk about how to succeed with nylon and nylon composites. Nylon is one of the most common plastics in consumer products, and there's a good reason for that. Its material properties make it an excellent choice for durability. Nylon is ductile, strong, and fairly chemical resistant, which is why you'll find it in things like power tools, which are made of nylon or nylon composites. You need something that's impact resistant can survive a drop and chemical resistance to survive the sort of grease and grime that you'll find on a job. These same sort of properties are sought after in a 3D printing filament, but it can be challenging to print at times. Luckily, I do have some helpful tips for you that should make you as successful as I am. So let's take a look at the first one. Bed adhesion is a huge factor in the success of your 3D prints. And of all the materials that our testing team has put through its paces and from my own personal experience, Garolite is the way to go for any nylon-based 3D printing filament. Of all the other materials that we've tested, they just don't seem to have the texture or adhesive properties that nylon seems to like. But Garolite has small pores in its surface that help the molten nylon actually mechanically lock into it instead of just adhering to a sticky surface. When you pair that with a thin layer of PVA glue stick to help prevent the nylon from sticking too well to the Garolite, you can have perfectly flat bottoms to your nylon or nylon composite 3D prints. And with layer lock Garolite, you can find a sheet in the exact size of your printer's bed, or you can even attach it to a spare Biltec flex plate for easy part removal or material changes. To print with nylon, you need an all metal hot end. Nylon has a printing temperature with the bottom of the range at 245 degrees Celsius. But for PTFE lined hot ends, PTFE has a maximum printing temperature of 245 degrees Celsius, which doesn't mean that nylon is just barely able to be printed on those. It means that printing at that temperature for an extended period of time will cause the PTFE to off gas noxious fumes. So PTFE cannot print nylon. If your printer already has an all metal hot end by default, or you upgraded your 3D printer to have one, then you have all the hardware requirements needed to be able to print with nylon but you need to make sure that your nozzle is ready if you're going to be printing any of the abrasive materials like carbon fiber filled nylon X, glass fiber filled nylon G, or Kevlar filled nylon K. While there are stainless steel nozzles that are described as abrasive resistant, these nozzles don't usually last more than a couple spools before the orifice of the nozzle becomes too large to be reliably used. If you're gonna be printing with these abrasive filaments very regularly, then you may want to upgrade to something like a hardened steel nozzle at a minimum or you can use something like the Olsen Ruby, the E3D Nozzle X, or the Slice Engineering Vanadium Nozzle for frequent abrasive printing. Now that you have the hardware taken care of, you think you're ready to go, right? Not quite, there's still one more thing to take care of and that's humidity. 3D printing filaments will absorb water from the air until they hit their saturation point where they can't absorb any more water. For some materials, this can take so long that you completely print with the entire spool before it gets anywhere close to saturated, like PLA or ABS. But for other materials like nylon, it'll hit its saturation point within a couple hours. What you'll want to do is dry out your nylon before you ever use it, or in the best case scenario, print directly from your drying apparatus. Personally, I just print directly from the print dry because it makes it easy by actively removing the moisture from the environment around the spool and then from the filament itself. And with small ports on the side, you can print directly from it. Wet and dry nylon have clear differences. Wet nylon will pop and hiss as it extrudes. It is more opaque, poor layer adhesion, poor bed adhesion, and poor retraction results. Whereas dry nylon will extrude without noise. It is more translucent, stronger overall, and has reliable and consistent printing performance. Nylon and its composite derivatives are exceptional filaments that provide the perfect material properties for a multitude of jobs. These three aspects of preparation can improve your chances of a successfully finished nylon 3D print. I hope that you've learned something new about nylon and nylon composites, or if you have something for me to learn, I hope you leave it in the comments down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching that how to succeed when printing with nylon and nylon composites. Over the years, I've really learned the importance of making sure all of my materials are dry, and I hope that you've learned that lesson as well. If you want to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. Or if you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com. See you on the next one.